Uh, okay, so we're going to uh, continue this section. Uh, what we're looking for, looking at today, is solving rational equations. So let's start out with a uh, easy one that you would remember from your days back as a uh, <coughs> algebra student. Okay. Let's say in algebra class you were asked to solve the equation, thank you, um, x over 4 plus x minus 2 over, let's not go 12, let's go uh, 5 equals 2. Okay. And I remember having this conversation with you many, many years ago because that's when we learned that forest hates fractions, okay? Um, and so your goal was right away to get rid of the fraction by multiplying by what would be the common denominator, which in this case is 20. Very important, how did we get the 20? By multiplying the 4 and the 5 together. Okay, so really what we're doing is multiplying by 4 times 5. So that when I multiply 4 times 5 times x over 4, the 4's cancel, right? Somebody say, right? Yeah. yeah. And it gives me 5x. And when I multiply 4 times 5 times this one, now the 5's cancel, right? And that gives you uh, 4 times x minus 2 <coughs> equals 40. Okay, can you start over on that again? Start over on that again? Yeah. No. Wait, no. No, I'm fine. He said something. Don't want to be honest. He said something. Okay. I got the four times five part. All right, so I'm going to start by multiplying by the common denominator, which is 20. And I want to write that as four times five, okay? Because I want you to make a connection for what we're going to do in a second that it's this times this, okay? So when I multiply the first thing by four times five, the fours cancel, so that leaves me five times x, which is? Why did the fours cancel? I don't get Because there's a four on top and there's a four on the bottom. Okay, so anytime you have the same number on top and the same number on the bottom, okay? All right. So same deal now when I do the next one. Hey, this is the other problem. What? You're not paying any attention. We know the other one you asked. I'm helping Drew on a 15. How come like whenever like you guys could never be wrong? So now when I multiply four times five times this one, five. since I have a five on the top and a five on the bottom, the fives cancel. Okay. So I'm left with a four. Okay times this whole thing, and that's important also. Oh, why it's not just, well, I'll do that in a second, but I wanted to show my work as I want. Oh. So, okay. oh, I I'll distribute it. Minus eight. Eight. Yeah, four x minus eight, same thing as four times minus six x minus two. Okay, well, I did the whole thing. Right? Okay, so much for this being like a college level class. And then four times uh, five times two over there is 40, okay? okay. So that's how we got there. Uh, All right, this was supposed to be the easy algebra this is one. the easy part. Uh, Okay, so like you guys said, 5x plus 4x minus 8 equals 40. So 9x minus 8 equals 40, uh, whoops, 40. And then 9x equals 48. Why does it equal 40? Because I added 8 over there. Uh, so the 40? No, I said 48. Oh, why does it equal 40? Because 2 times 20 is 40. Right? So x equals 48 divided by 9, whatever that is, I don't care. Okay. All right, so hopefully you kind of get that because what we're about to do is more complicated. No. Okay? Because what we're going to do now is we're going to not just have numbers on the bottom, we're going to have polynomials on the bottom. No. Can we do those though on the last yeah. one? Do you want us to reduce? Uh, yeah, I would want you to reduce your Okay, but the uh, process is exactly the same. I want to get rid of the fractions. I suppose I need to pause. Yeah. 
So, same as the other one, since I had a 4 on the bottom and a 5 on the bottom, I multiplied by 4 times 5. Okay? So, since I have an x minus 1 on the bottom and an x minus 3 on the bottom, I'm going to multiply by... x minus 1 and x minus 3. Awesome. Look at that. Alright, and then I have to, of course, multiply over here by x minus 1 and x minus 3. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay? So, when I multiply this first term times x minus 1 and x minus 3, the x minus 1's cancel because I have one on the top and one on the bottom. So that leaves me with x minus 3 times 2x. And if you want to distribute that in your head like you did some of you on the last one, that's fine. I'm just going step by step. Plus, I have an x minus 3 on the bottom and an x minus cancel. 3 on the top, so those cancel, so I'm left with this time x minus 1 times 1. Okay, why? Okay, good. Alright, so here's the lucky part of this problem. What is x minus 1 times x minus 3 if I foiled it out? X squared. X squared. Minus 3x. Minus 4x. Minus 4x. Four. Four plus, uh, four. plus 3. So guess what? This right here is three actually four. the same as that right there. So this whole thing cancels with what that right there. And it equals mm -hmm. 2. It is because these are book problems and they're set up to work that way. Can we just cancel right? In the real <laughs> world, as you guys sometimes are concerned about, this would not happen. So people that actually use this in their daily jobs, like the engineers we talked about, have to do more complicated math. But they're going to make this easier for you so you can kind of learn it as you go. Okay? Alright. So do you understand that stuff, what I did there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Alright, now you just, now it's just easy math to solve this equation. So if I distribute this equation to the x, I'm going to get x minus 1 times x minus 3 equals 2. Okay? Now I'm going to get x minus 1 times x minus 3 equals 2. Okay? Alright, so what I did and then I wrote this one here just so you wouldn't be confused. There's this one up here, but obviously distributing a one isn't going to change anything. So that's plus x minus one, and that equals two. Okay? Now what? Let's combine like terms. Combine like terms. So there's no other x squared. How many x's do minus I have? Five x. Minus five x. Minus five x. Minus two. Can I bring the two over while we're having this conversation? So minus three, 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 zero. Plus three equals zero. Wow. And how do I solve that? Quadratic formula, how else? Graph it. Graph it, how else? Because uh, you always set it equal to zero when you're solving uh, equations that are bigger than linear. What? Or you could factor it, okay? So you have three different ways that you can solve this. Okay, and negative what? Okay, so Tucker chose to graph it. Uh, oh, you used your formula? Okay, wow, see, once again, you're just like immediately mad at me. No, I didn't. I told you that last week. All right, sorry. Um, okay, so one of these works and one of them does not work. Which one does not work and why? 0.5. Uh, wrong. So you, just so graph you could, but that'd take a long time to graph this. Yeah, a lot to right. Right. Obviously, since he said negative 0.5 and I said he's wrong, the 3 doesn't work, but why does the 3 oh, not work? The, it would be zero on the Excellent, because if I put 3 in here, 3 wrong. minus 3 is 0. And so 3 is not in the domain of the original function. And so this has a fancy name. This is called a extraneous solution. Will we always be able to look back at the original equation to see which one won't work? Yes. Now ask me, will there always What's be one that, that won't work? There always be one that won't work? Not necessarily. Now ask me, will there always be one that does work? Will there always be one that does work? Not necessarily. <laughs> it's possible that you could throw them both out and get your favorite answer. No, no, no. It's possible that both of them will work and you won't have to throw any of them out. Alright? And you know if they work by putting it in there. Like by, yeah, putting it in with here and with here. Right. So one, if we got one as an answer, that wouldn't work. Because one minus one is zero, you can't have zero. Three also won't work. So if it was like x plus 4 on the bottom, what number would work? Negative 4. 
Why you guys are so surprised by that?